Hello everyone. I hope all you are doing very good. So today we will start with model number two, elastic properties of a material. We are going to start the concept with elastic, elasticity, plasticity, stress, strain, tensile stress, shear stress, compressive stress, strain hardening and strain softening and failures. After that, Hooke's law and different elastic limit, Poisson's ratio and all all these things we will try to cover in this video so stay tuned stay connected before we begin with the concept wise explanation i would like to request you to subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you never miss any notification from my channel and please share with your friends and like and comment with this let's roll the intro Elasticity is the branch of science which only deals the elastic property of the material. So before we begin what is elasticity, plasticity and all, we must understand the basic concept like deforming force and restoring force. Here in this video I am trying to crush a paper. So to while we are doing this we are applying a force which is going to disturb the shape and size and length of the object so to do this we need a force and that force we call it as deforming force once we understand the deforming force then we must know what is restoring force the force is equal and opposite to the deforming that come into play which tries to restore the body to the original state or original shape this is nothing but we call it as restoring force so that means the restoring force always equal and opposite to the deforming force now we can say what do you mean by elasticity and plasticity elasticity means it is the property of the material by virtue of which they regain their original shape and size that is why we call it as elasticity or elastic property of the material let us see what you mean by plasticity or plastic property of the material in the case of plasticity or plastic property if the material or property of the material never regain its original size and shape after removal of deforming force that type of force we call it as plasticity or plastic property of a material let's see some classification of material with related to its property like elastic property and plastic property as with some example so first elastic property or elastic material it is a property of the material which regain its original size and shape after removal of the forming force for example quartz steel rubber all these are the example for elastic material in the case of plastic material it is a property of the material which doesn't regain its original size and shape after removal of deforming force like clay, mud, wax, lead, chewing gum and putty. This is the example for plastic material. In generally, we can say we will not have any material which shows perfectly elastic material or we can't say any material which is a perfectly plastic material so we always get a mixture of it that means whenever we got a material it always has mixture of elastic and plastic property that means if we are applying a deforming force to up to certain level then it may shows elastic property if we increase goes on increasing then that material 
convert from elastic property to plastic property so that it will not going to change its original size and shape once we apply more deforming force this is also a type of material we usually see in the nature in the next concept we can see what do you mean by stress stress is the force acting per unit area of a cross section of the wire or a rod or a any body you can also define like this also stress is a restoring force per unit area of a cross section of a wire or rod this is known as stress the formula for stress is force by area f by a unit for stress is newton per meter square let us see the types of stress there are three types of stress we can see one is longitudinal stress we can also call it as tensile stress bulk or volume stress last one is shearing or tangential stress let us see one by one first one longitudinal or tensile stress the stress in which the restoring force act perpendicular to the area of cross section along the length of the wire that is what we call it as longitudinal or tensile stress this is only belongs to the length not for the volume of the body in the definition for bulk or volume stress is the which body is subjected to equal forces normally on all the faces bulk stress produces change in volume not with the length or shape of the body in the next concept in the shear stress or tangential stress means it is the stress in which the restoring force are parallel to the surface this stress produces change in the shape of the body but not in the volume this is not we call it as tangential or shearing stress these are the basic definition in the case of stress let us see what about strain in the case of strain there is a change in dimension to the original dimension of the material is nothing but strain uh, the strain may be denoted as psi that is equals to change in dimension divided by original dimension here the change in dimension means either it may be related to the length volume or shearing layer these are the three things which we can see and comes under the strain so let us start one by one in the first definition longitudinal strain it is the ratio of change in length to the original length so longitudinal strain strain is nothing but a change in length by original length change in length we denoted as delta l divided by capital l in the case of volume it is the ratio of change in volume to the original volume if we write it in the form of equation then we can write it as change in volume by original volume nothing but delta v divided by capital v delta v is the change in volume small v or capital v is the original volume in the third condition or in the third definition we can see it is the ratio of lateral displacement between two layers to the perpendicular distance between two layers nothing but delta x divided by small x we call it as shearing strain let's see what is hooke's law within the elastic limit within the elastic limit means the material which can regain its original size and shape after the removing of the deforming force that is what we call it as elastic material so within that elastic limit if we applying a stress and that stress is goes on increasing then the strain and stress having a relation is proportionally directly proportional to each other if we increase the stress strain also increases if we decrease the stress strain also decreases that means if we increase the force on a material then strain means which is related to the shape size of the material so size and shape of the materials also goes on changes either it may be change in length change in volume change in shear that is what we call it as hooke's law 
so stress is directly proportional to the strain by removing proportionality constant by taking k then stress is equals to k into strain so k is the proportionality constant is known as modulus of elasticity either sometimes in the textbook we may mention stress equals to e into strain so now we came to know what is hooke's law we already know what is the uh, elasticity plasticity definition after that we came to know what is the stress what is the strain types of stress types of strain we already came to know what do you mean by restoring force the force which is used to regain its original size and shape of the material the force which is required to regain its original size and shape of the material is nothing but we call it as restoring force deforming force means the force which is used to deform the size of the material or shape of the material that type of force we call it as deforming force now we are going to understand a stress and strain diagram how the material is going to be react when we increase the strain how the material will going to be react when we increase the strain how that material behaves when we goes on increasing certain force at that time the elasticity plasticity of that material will be studied by using stress and strain diagram so in the stress and strain diagram to study this we need a one material where we are applying a stress It is nothing but we are applying a force on that material along with that where stress is on y axis strain is on x axis so goes on increasing the force is nothing but goes on increasing the stress how that material will behaves let us see one by one by using the graph let us see in this graph o a b c d e this is the graph we plotted in the stress and strain diagram when we study this graph we can see 0 to a so 0 to a means the material which can show the elastic property till 0 to a that means that material will show the elastic property 0 to a once the material or the stress reaches at a level then that is the elastic limit we call it as elastic limit once that limit passed that material start to lose its original elastic power then slow slightly it is move towards the plasticity of the material at point b we call it as upper yield point this is the point where the material stop it showing the elastic property and that the same time it start to show the plastic property of that material so 0 to of is of we call it as permanent set later once we goes on increasing the stress then the point will start to move b to c without further increase of stress the reason where b c is the irregular shape so b is called upper yield point and the stress is called yield stress the sudden increase in the strain gets stopped at point c we call it as lower yield point once it is start to move c to d as we increase the stress then that material will start to show a plastic property that means if we change the size and shape of that material it will remains like that only it will not regain its original size and shape of that material that means that material will start to show when we apply that much of stress where it convert from elastic property to the plastic property so that's why we call it as c to d reason is plastic reason as we goes on increasing the stress 
the material will first lose its elastic property then it gain the plastic property once we goes on increasing the stress then the material will start to decrease its thickness but without changing the volume so once the material start to decrease the thickness then point d is the maximum stress of the material can with stand and the corresponding deforming force at the point d we call it as tensile stress or ultimate strength once the material reaches at the point d then after that that material is going to be break even though there is no uh, observable increase in stress but it still there is a change in strain so ultimately it's going to be break that point e is called breaking stress under the area of the curve that is o a b c d e g gives work done per unit volume this is it for stress and strain diagram this may be asked for 8 marks in a semester exam this is also an important topic in elastic material chapter in the above topic as we discussed where how the material behaves or you can also say that how the material changes its property when the stress and strain goes on increasing so this is what we came to know there are other factors also affecting on the properties of the material like elastic property and plastic property with respect to the temperature pressure and all let's see that also during this process we came to know that if we are going to rolling or hammering a material if we increase the temperature or if we in, uh, include impurities to the material or if we gradually or suddenly decrease the temperature of the material how the properties of material can going to be changed that is what we can say or that is what we can see what are the other factors affecting the elastic properties like rolling or hammering temperature impurities and annealing or quenching in the case of rolling and hammering sometimes what happen the material will be undergoes for rolling and hammering due to this reason there will be a gradually or generally breaks in bonding due to this reason the material may increase its elastic property so due to that reason we used to do rolling or hammering to that material this is how the one of the factors can affect the elastic property of the material in the second factor we can say if we increase the temperature of the material that means we are going to lose elastic property of that material for example if we increase the temperature of material like rubber if we increase the temperature ultimately that rubber will lose its elastic property this is also an example for temperature and this is also one of the factor which is affecting on elastic property of that material in the third case impurities for example if we are going to add some impurities to the material or if we are going to remove them some impurities from the material that may also affect the elastic property of material like gold if we increase the impurities level the gold will lose its uh, elastic property if we decrease the impurities level then the gold may increase its elastic property this is how the third factor affecting on elastic property of the material in the last factors where we are increasing the temperature of the material by while we are cooling we use certain procedure where either we can cool it gradually or we can cool it suddenly so due to this reason there will be a change in particle size of that material so due to that reason that material got hardened so due to this reason that material going to lose its elastic property for example steel steel before hardening or before annealing or before quenching process 
it we can change in any shape or we can mold it any any shape so once we done with the quenching so it will be very hard to do any kind of work on that steel so this is how the factors affecting on elastic properties of the material in this case we may get this question for 6 marks so this is also an important topic according to video syllabus that's it for today guys i hope all the concept is clear to you people if any queries related to this topic you may comment in the comment section if you like this video please like it and share with your friends so this is how you can support me to this channel and don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon that's it